here with a fun chat to kick off the October Preptober season. And I'm going live right now, so I'm not just going to share tips and um, my plans for Preptober, but I also want to hear yours as well. Even if you're watching the replay, definitely let us know. And we are also going to talk a little bit about, um, I'm going to give you like a little update on Pitch Wars stuff since I've submitted and how that's affecting my Preptober nanoing that's going to be happening. Um, another one of my goals, we're just going to have a bunch of chatty stuff for this live stream, but another one of my goals that I want to talk about is to be reading more and some ways how I'm going about that and some ways that you guys can actually be reading along with me if that's one of your goals to be reading more. So I'm going to share about that. And then if you stick around all the way till the end, I'm going to be giving you um, a preview of what we're going to be talking about next week because um, I'm going to be doing a free um, live webinar all about something to do with author platforms and it's going to be fun. So if you've been following me on Instagram, you got a little sneak peek of that today, um, but we're going to talk about that all the way at the end. So I was going to do this as more of like a pre-recorded video and stuff, but then I just realized that a talky video is really hard for me to do without actually talking to people um, and being live. So I am live with you guys right now. I'm going to shout out a bunch of you and um, some of you showed up early. I love when you guys show up early to the live because we get to chat in the chat box. Um, but I see JJ here and Crafting by the Pound and Natalie. Hi, Natalie and Jody and Sean, and Cassie, and Martin, and Carolina, and Sarah, and Holly. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you here, and it's so funny, because again, if you've been following me on Instagram, just like two hours ago, I was like, I think I'm gonna go live. Anybody wanna come with me? And you all were like, yes. So I love it, um, and before we get started, I'm just going to um, check a couple of the comments, but I want you guys to let me know first and foremost, because we're going to spend most of the time talking about Preptober. Um, is this your first NaNoWriMo that you're going to be prepping for for Preptober? Um, and uh, if even if it's not, then what are you prepping for? Like what kind of story? You don't have to share all the details and spoilers and stuff, but like I'm going to be sharing a little bit about mine and I would love to hear about what kind of story you are prepping for. Um, and people are just saying they made it just in time. Hey, everybody. Um, do, do, do. Hey, Brittany, have you watched Lauren Sievers' video on the writing retreat scam? Ooh, no, I haven't. Um, probably won't because I don't like tea. But Thanks for the knowledge. Um, let's see, let's see. And Sa Satan's here, awesome. And Morgan, guys, you came out of the woodwork tonight. Jana, um, yes, I am super, super excited you all are here. Thanks for hanging out with me. And yeah, I'm I'm super stoked. Um, Jackie's here, oh my gosh. Bethany, hello, hello, hello. Okay, um, Caroline says, trying to study and watch this live at the same time. Good. Good luck, Carolina. Good luck. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. And then Carolina also says, first nano prepping, not the first participating. Okay. So that's another thing too, that you might um, have done nano before, but not actually spent the time prepping before. You guys can also let me know in the chat. Are you a plotter? Are you a pantser? Are you a planter? What do you consider yourself? I definitely consider myself a plotter, but I am going to be doing a little less plotting for this nano. Um, and I'm going to talk about that. That in a second, um, but just wanted to hear a little bit about you guys first. Martin says, I'm prepping for about five to 10 children's picture books in November. So that's awesome. Um, so Martin isn't doing the typical novel, but he's doing picture books and using that time effectively. So I love it. Um, Sarah says, first NaNoWriMo, I've actually prepped. So we've got a couple of people like doing this. So I love that. Tried to pants a NaNoWriMo novel a few years ago and failed miserably. I'm prepping this time. So hopefully I will make it to 50K. Yes. And I'm going to be giving you some tips and thoughts on how to be doing that for sure. Um, Cassie says, definitely not my first NaNo. Um, sounds like you've done it a lot. Uh, but she says, my story is a YA contemporary that I wrote for last year, but it was a mess. Now that I know more about story structure, I am replotting. Awesome. I love that. Jody says, my 12th NaNo, and I'm prepping so hard writing a Christian romance this time. Oh, so cool. I would love to hear more about that, Jody, when you get going on that. 
Um, Morgan says, it's like my millionth nano. Awesome. But I've never won. Okay. So we could talk to you about some tips about if you struggle to hit that 50K, you know, how can we hit that? Um, she says, I'm very dedicated to prepping this time. Dark fantasy YA. Awesome. Cool. We've got so much. We've got Pantsers trying to learn how to plot. Um, now this says not first nano, but excited to get my own goals for nano this year. And JJ says first time doing Preptober. Oh, I didn't know that JJ. JJ is one of my awesome patrons. There's a few people in here. I'm still learning all kinds of new stuff about them all the time. So um, awesome and not first time doing nano. Okay, I'm prepping for a YA fantasy. Yes, and if you, you guys should go check out. JJ on Instagram because she already shared a little bit about her story and it sounds really cool. Um, Jackie says, I just sent the outline for my second romance to Natalia. Awesome. And I'm outlining my next fairy tale while I wait, but the romance is my nano project. Woo, so exciting. Um, Crafting by the Pounds, I just found out today that I'm a pantser. It's, yeah, and you can still plot or replot after you pants. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit too. Um, we've got another pantser, a lazy, very lazy plotter. Um, first time Nano for Satan. Um, and please tell me if I'm pronouncing anybody's name wrong. Satan, I don't know that I've said your name out loud before, so let me know if I'm pronouncing you wrong. Um, I've done some light plotting. I'm doing a lot of world building though. Yes, I love the world building. Um, Steven's writing corner. Hey, Steven says, this is like the fourth nano I've prepped for. I'm prepping for a YA fantasy. You guys, all the fantasy. I love it. Uh, I just recently came up with the working title. Ooh, I love that. If you want to share it with us, you can, but I understand if you're, you're hiding it for now. Um, Trace says, this is uh, far from my first nano. It's oh, 16th. Whoa, girl. That's some dedication right there. How many books has come out of that? Have you successfully like gotten through the first draft of 16 novels? I'd love to know. Um, she says, I'll work, I'm working on my military fantasy. Ooh, that sounds cool. You guys, there's so many great comments here. We are gonna have to get into the tips soon. Um, but I just I just want to see a couple more. Katie says, I have participated in Nano on and off for a couple of years. I'm prepping for my debut science fiction thriller. I'm a planner for sure. Cool. Awesome, awesome. Oh, I see a new um, Athena. Hey, Athena, hello, third nano, never won. That's okay, you're still writing words. She says, I'm prepping this time book two and I should make the 50K. So fun, and I see some other people popping in here. Hi, Zach. Um, Franny, gosh, we have so many people on today. Um, says, I'm prepping fully this time. I did nano two times and failed both. I'm writing my first psychological horror novel. Ah, oh, so cool, you guys. Um, I could just read all of your comments all day long, but I do want to get into some prepping and planning stuff. And so um, let me know. You can always comment again if you really want me to read it. Um, but let's get into some of this stuff here. And I'm going to share a little bit of what I am prepping um, and how I'm doing that. Hi, Rebecca. Just saw she popped in. Um, and so, yeah. So for me, let me just back up for a second because... Uh, as you guys heard in last week's video, I submitted to Pitch Wars, which is a mentoring program um, for traditionally people who want to be traditionally published to get a mentor to help them uh, get and like make their manuscript better and hopefully get an agent. And um, so I have been just waiting. You know, mentors are still making their way through the submissions. Um, but the, the, the thing that is so rough, you guys, is that they are going to officially announce who the mentees are on November 3rd, which is like the very beginning of NaNo. And um, so if by some grace of God, <laughs> I get a mentor um, on November 3rd, I'm going to have to use NaNo to work on um, Project Fairy Fantasy or on Wings of Ash and Dust, which I submitted to Pitch Wars because you only have three months to get that manuscript tight and improved and ready for the agent round. Um, so I'm gonna have to switch gears if that's what happens, but I am trying to keep my cool and trying to just like direct my attention elsewhere right now because I have no control anymore of, of getting picked um, and I just have to wait it out. And so I am working on a brand new story. I've been working on, um, on Wings of Ash and Dust for about two years now. And it's been like the only story that I have been plotting and writing and drafting and uh, beta readers and critique partners and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, I've been submersed in the world of On Wings of Ash and Dust. And um, 
Now I am super excited though to start moving on to a new project, at least for the time being. And um, if I don't get into pitch wars, that's what I will be working on for um, for Nano. So that's what I'll be prepping. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think of, I'm seeing more comments coming, you guys. It's distracting. Um, do, 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 do. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions or anything. Um, some people are saying they want to do pitch wars or they submitted this year, which is great. And you guys, oh, Martin, hoping that I'm doing, I do well and get a mentor. Thank you. But if I don't, then I'll be working on new story. Um, so I have a question. Um, how do you guys then go ahead and start prepping. Some of you are like, this is my first time prepping and you're probably sitting there, hopefully ready with a pen, ready to take some notes on what you should be doing. Um, and I'm gonna give some tips, but I would love if in the comments, those of you that have prepped before and had some success with that, let us know what your tips are as well. And maybe put the word tips in uh, capital letters so I can make sure to catch all of them. So like put it in T-I-P-S, capital letters, and then put your tip. Um, so I can put that on the screen for everybody to see as I am sharing as well. Um, and I'm just looking, oh, okay. So I already see some people talking about series Bibles, which I will get into. And Peggy's here, hey Peggy. And cool, and some people, like Morgan says, she's been writing her work in progress for 10 years. It's time to let it go and give it to the world so that she can write something else. So I love that, Morgan. I am there ready with you. Um, so let's get into some tips. I'm gonna put down the coffee so I can focus, okay? So the first um, thing that you need to do, obviously, is to actually pick your project. And a lot of you have already started sharing um, what that project is. Um, and let me just tell you a little bit more about mine um, because I think it's fun. Um, so I've actually, sometimes when you have multiple ideas, it's just like you have to pick one. And for me, I actually am taking three different ideas that I've had and putting them into one story. So if you're having trouble just picking one project to go with if you're a person that has a million different ideas here is a tip to just try meshing a couple of different ideas together and so what um, I am doing is mashing up a retelling of a story that I don't think I've seen anybody else do so I'm really excited to do that I'm not going to reveal it right now um, but it is, uh, it's, I think it's going to be fun. And it's actually a gender bent story uh, retelling. So the main character in the original story is a guy and I'm gender bending it to be a girl. Um, and so I think that's going to be really fun. I'm also totally switching the world. So um, it is typically set in like, a, I'll give a little tidbit here. It's typically set in a desert um, environment and I'm switching it potentially to a completely ice snow environment. Um, so there's a little tidbit there. Um, feel free to guess anything. You guys are probably not going to get it, but um, it should be fun. So that's the one thing that I am putting together. The second thing I am putting in there is um, I've always wanted to throw in certain elements of a particular musical that I've always loved that is also a movie, um, still in musical form, but a movie as well. And it was a movie I grew up with, musical I grew up with, and it has just some really fun characters and dynamics. And I sort of want to retell that a little bit into this story as well and the final thing is so I had like sort of like the basic story structure in the first retelling and then I have um, some elements of certain like side characters and dynamics in the second thing that I'm drawing inspiration from and the third thing is more about the main character and their character arc and the lesson that they learn and I'm actually pulling it from something that I've struggled with and had to learn from the last couple years. Um, and I'm sort of putting that into my main character. And um, so whereas the story that I submitted to Pitch Wars is a lot more in the sense of like totally not me, like totally opposite from me, anti-hero pirate, like, you know, very bold, very um, just in your face and doesn't care what people think and like all this stuff. Um, she's so different than I am, but this character that I'm gonna do for Nano, um, I think is gonna have a lot more elements of myself, still trying to make her different, um, but I think just her voice is probably gonna come a lot more naturally. So um, picking, <laughs> that's the first tip, you have to pick, one idea and sort of pull together those inspiration. Another idea, yeah, is to like 
grab a, do a Pinterest board um, and get a bunch of images that inspire you, um, putting together like a Spotify playlist that you can listen to and get you in the mood as you're writing for Nano. Um, and also just pulling together any other kinds of inspiration. So I might like rewatch that musical and take notes. I might um, reread parts of that um, story I wanna retell. Um, and I might journal about how I felt about that specific theme that I want my main character to learn. Um, and in preparation for actually writing her um, in November. So I know I just said a whole lot and that was like one tip and one point and there has been a ton of comments that have been coming in. So I am going to scroll back and try to find those ones that I see tips. So Martin says, um, I'm learning to outline and trying to outline. I have an Excel spreadsheet with all my characters. That's really fun. I love that Martin. Um, and then, oh, I see a question. Carolina says, I have a question and I'm trying to pull up the comment, but for some reason it's not working. Give me one second. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Carolina says, I have a question. How do you recommend us to prep for a sequel? Good point. Um, I'm just going to say really quick and let me know if you need any more than this. But um, first of all, I would read your first book or at least like take some notes from your first book. Make sure you have like a story Bible or series Bible, which I have a whole video on, um, or just at least a couple of pages of like basic information so that um, when you need to, um, you have to remember like what that character's hair color is or you know you you want to remember certain aspects you don't have to like go and dig back through your manuscript during nano when you should be writing words so that's one tip of just like make sure that you have all the basic details sort of sketched out somewhere so you can easily reference them um, so you can move on with your story. And the second is definitely still outline and plot, just like you would a first book. Um, but ask yourself, how are you going to continue that story? What things were left unanswered in book one that you need to answer? And what is like the new goal of book two and how are you going to get there? So let me know. And anybody else can share tips as well. Um, but that's just sort of what's coming off the top of my head. Um, okay, I think JJ has a tip here. I started with brainstorming and then started working on my outline using the Save the Cat Rates a Novel beats in Word as headers and subheaders. And I did a very similar thing, JJ, and I'm gonna show everybody how to do that in a second. So I love that. And let's see, I'm looking for tips. Uh, Sarah, or uh, Mara, sorry, says, uh, writing out my character goals and keeping them in mind if I run away from my outline. Perfect. I love that sort of little roadmap for you uh, during Nano. Um, Natalie says, put the writing time on your calendar each day. That way it's an official priority. I love that. You have to schedule it in and maybe even break up. You know, I think it's somebody, I hate math, but somebody correct me. I think it's like about 1600 words a day that you need to write in order to get to 50k. Um, so do you do 50,000 divided by how many days are in October um, or November and tell us how many words we need to write a day and schedule that in. That's right, Natalie. And also I would actually subtract a few days so that you have some catch up days. Um, so maybe even take 50k and divide that by like 25 days or something so that if you are running behind you have a couple days to catch up and maybe a couple days to rest because <laughs> you can get really tired and that's when you don't finish um Athena says, I am using colored post-it notes, character names, plot points, and more broken down, many colors, many pictures. Love, love, love it. Holly says, I prep using Save the Cat and the three-act structure and outlining your novel workbook by K.M. Wyland. And I'm just, I'm sort of going to be organic about my tips, you guys, because you guys are saying a lot of things that I was gonna say. Another one is obviously, yes, Save the Cat Writes a Novel. You can see I have all my notes in here that I reference, and I actually have a cheat sheet that I'm gonna show you in a little bit where I took basic notes of each of the story beats that um, Jessica Brody shares and um, outlined everything. Again, I'll show you that in a little bit, and um, gave it to my patrons um, as part of what they get as being a patron. So um, if you guys are patrons and you you haven't gotten that yet um, I'm gonna show you where that is but you can definitely download that and use that for Preptober as well 
Um, and if you're not a patron yet, feel free to join us at any tier. You would get that breakdown. Um, Callie says, if you are dry uh, creative wise and have a deck of tarot cards, draw a card and write what comes from that image. I have done one card a day and worked to see if I could make a story out of it. Yeah, so you can definitely pull inspiration from anything like that, even uh, Pinterest. Um, and yeah, just shake it up and get yourself something totally new in your brain so that it might inspire you um, for something new. Um, so Jody says tips, write short stories for your main characters to get the, to know them better. I can talk, sorry. Uh, character sheets work, but writing short stories helps me get to know my two main characters. I love this so much. And because yeah, you can do like a sort of archive of like their hair color and their personality and all this different kind of stuff. And you can still do that. I think with this, you could just do like a separate page where you write, um, here's the thing, you could write a short story or you could write like a journal entry from them, like as if they were just like just their thoughts, so you can get more into their head and find their voice. So um, love that, Jody. Thanks for sharing. Um, oh, Holly, can't wait for your nano novel. It sounds so good. Oh, yay! Thank you. Holly actually got so part of when I plotted this, I actually did some plotting already on the Wander Writers Retreat, which is actually where I got this wonderful mug by Jesse Elliott, Canada, and. Um, and I spent that week uh, not actually writing story, but like plotting. I did like 5,000 words of just plotting. So that was really fun. Um, and I'm going to be revisiting that uh, soon. Um, Cassie says, definitely using the Save the Cat beat sheet. So helpful. Yay. Um, and... Ooh, another tips for sequel. Jackie says, go back to your first book or outline and note down the timeline and then figure out what your characters still have to learn. Yeah, so similar to what I said, awesome. Um, <laughs> not allowed to go into an office supply store because I want all the pens and notebooks. Yes, I'm there with you. Um, another tip, getting my outline done early so I can read it out to a friend and family to find plot holes early. Girl, you are on top of that. Yes, I think that's great, especially if you have critique partners too. You could swap those bad boys. I love it. Um, Katie, oh, sounds like a wonderful story. Thank you. Um, I Definitely want to beta you guys. Oh, you're making me want to make a beta reader list already. Um, okay, Christopher says I'm outlining the Power Cube Wars with okay, that's the name of the story, I think. With Save the Cat Writes a Novel. Fabulous. Okay. Oh my gosh, there's so many. I'm just gonna look through and try to find anything that I see with the word tips. Oh, I see another one. And then I want to show you some resources that I promised to show you. Um, Evie says, though, hi Evie. She says snacks in Ziploc bags, ready to go, planning out ways to keep up with your self-care habits so you don't get uh, so caught up in nano that you burn out. Use timer apps like Forest to um, to take breaks. I love this. I love this. Um, yeah. So you have to think about your physical self too. You know, and that you can eat and you can take breaks, and it's just very good. Thank you for that reminder, Evie. And the other thing is, guys, I'm just gonna throw out here, and I was gonna like do screen share and show you like the nano website, which I'll I'll do in a minute. But if you haven't been on the nanorimo.org website, you should get on there, make sure you have a profile, and then everybody in this chat right now put um in the comments your name, your username from NanoRimo if you want, so that everybody can request to be your friend and you can have more friends helping you on NanoRimo because that is the beauty of of doing all doing this together is that we get to cheer each other on and I think a big tip that I'm going to tell you yeah right now in prepping and in writing for NaNoWriMo is to have friends and to do word sprints I'll probably host one or I'll jump on somebody else's word sprint um, during NaNo and um, to write together at the same time that's another thing um, that's another thing we do actually in my patreon group like all the time like every day somebody's like hey who wants to sprint um so it's really fun and really really helpful um so feel free to put your username for NaNoWriMo in the comments so we can all find each other Jody says um write by hand even if it's the first chapter I can't write when I share stare at a blank screen okay cool 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 that is something that people can definitely try if they are stuck um 
oh, I think this is from a while ago. My first thought was Rumpelstiltskin. Is that from what I was saying before you responding to something else, Jackie? Because it is not Rumpelstiltskin. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm looking just to see tips. You guys are awesome. Callie says, get your snacks and stuff for Nano early, Ziploc them keep them fresh. Also get up and move around every 20 minutes. Self-care is a big deal. Agreed. My husband is a physical therapist and he's always telling me to set alarms. So I get up and stretch and, you know, even I should, I should do a whole YouTube video with him. Um, because he has some great tips about like how to stretch when you're sitting, um, for a long time. Cause I was getting like pain in my shoulder for a while. And then he helped me with a few things and like, I don't get that pain anymore. Um, so yeah. Um, Martin's just adding to that his, in his spreadsheet he has their entire description down their height and weight all of that. I love that. Um, another tip. I love you guys are beating me too. a bunch of stuff. Uh, Story Bible is a great way to keep track of everything from the outline, world building, list of characters and more. And again, I've done a couple of videos on um, Story Bibles, series Bibles. Um, so definitely check those out if you need like a starting point because I give a lot. I even give free, free templates um, if you would like them. Um, okay, people are saying words. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's a little over sixteen hundred um, words, um, sixteen hundred sixty-six, sixty-seven words per day to hit your nano goal if you're going to write every single day. Wow, I am so behind in comments, you guys. Um, okay, I'm going to try to get through these. I'm sorry. Um, Cassie says, don't just focus on your character's want, but also clarify the underlying need that will come to light during Act 3. Character is important uh, to character is important to guiding your plot. Yes, agreed. Agreed, agreed. Um, okay, all right. I'm trying to get through this, guys, because I have some stuff. I want to show you some goodies, and we're already like a half hour in. How did this happen? Um... Let's see, I think this is a tip. Susan Dennard's suggestion to infuse magical cookies. You have a list a list of what makes you excited about the story and makes sure each scene has at least one. Ooh, I like that a lot. Sort of motivating you. Okay, people are putting in their username. I love, love, love this. Okay, and I think I finally caught up. Okay, cool. Okay, let me show you some fun stuff. I have a list here, so I'm just making sure I don't miss anything. Um, cool. Yeah. So my first tool, save the cat, write the novel, make sure you have it. Even if you, I always tell people, even if you just read the first couple chapters, um, she gives the whole outline. Um, so if you, and even if you are a pantser, it is great to read just to have story structure in your brain. And then after you pants the novel, you can go back and, um, make sure that you're hitting the beats in the right places. But here's what I want to show you guys. Okay. First of all, First of all, we're going to get there. First of all, I want to show you the NaNoWriMo website. Um, ooh, here we go. And this is my username. So if you haven't added me on NaNoWriMo yet, definitely please do. I want all the support and I want to cheer you guys on. It's going to be awesome. And um, But with the actual prepping, I want to now show you a tool um, sort of similar to how JJ was saying, she creates this or something similar. So um, just making sure you guys can see this. Okay, so this is a doc that I, I put together for my Preptober this year. And um, the first page is actually just some questions to ask um, when you're creating your hero, because you want your story to surround around your hero's arc. And this is um, all stuff from Save the Cat, but it's just questions. Um, who is the hero of your story? What flaws do they have? Um, what is the effect or how is the problem or flaw affecting your hero's life or world? Um, so it's just a bunch of really great things to make sure you can really think about for your character before you get into into um, the actual story because <clears throat> the story and all the events that happen should be guided by all of these things. Then we get into the outline, okay? And what I'm planning to do since I did a very quick outline um, 
when I was at the retreat in the summer is now I'm going to take that. And I'm going to try to organize it um, even more so into the different beats and into um, different chapters. So this might look like total gobb gobbledygook um, if you haven't read Save the Cat. But basically, these are all different kinds of beats and scenes that happen um, in a basic story to move the story at a good pace. Um, and I've marked here for you guys not only the um, name of the beat, but also where it should happen in the story. And then if it is a single scene or a multi scene beat. So if it's a single scene beat, it means that it is a quicker moment that usually happens in one scene. And if it is a multi scene beat, um, then it means it happens over multiple scenes. Um, so for example, the opening image happens once right at the beginning, and it sets up the story. And then the setup happens over multiple scenes where you really get to see sort of a day in the life with your main character, what is wrong with their world right now, which sets up how it's going to change in the end. Again, you should really read Save the Cat to understand all of this. But what I've done is I've set up um, little markers for each chapter. So if the opening image happens in one scene, I'm going to roughly estimate that I'm going to need one chapter, maybe less, to do this. Um, because the setup is multiple scenes, I'm going to say that I might need at least two chapters to do this. And this is where I would then type in here and um, do like a little summary for each chapter. And this is just gonna, this might be too much for you, but it's it's awesome for me because then when I'm going to write, I can look to my um, outline here and be like, okay, in this chapter, this is what's supposed to happen. And if I change it while I'm writing, then I'll go back to my outline and I'll just like edit it or create like a version two. But at least I have a starting point, an idea of where I'm going. Now, this is where it gets really cool. And sorry, I'm not watching the comments, but I'll get back to it in a second. This is what's really cool, is that if you create these um, things called headers in your Word doc, you can then create um, an outline where you can easily navigate to the different parts of your outline um, in a Word document or in a Google document. So I have a whole video um, on my digital stories Bible, um, story Bible or series Bible, which I'll link in the description after this. I forgot to do it before. But um, if you watch that, I sort of break down how to do this. Um, I just love all the click. It's sort of like having Scrivener without paying for Scrivener. <laughs> um, and in this sense, like if I figure out that like this scene really needs to happen earlier or later, I can always just copy it or cut it and then move it. Um, so that's why I haven't said like chapter one or chapter two or chapter three, because I might move scenes and chapters around. Um, so that's what I did there. But basically, if you have the version of Word that I have right now, um, if you click View and then you click Navigation Pane, that is what is showing up there. And then when you go back to um, the home here, up here you have your headers. So I have made Act 1, Act 2, etc., Heading 1. And then I've made all the story beats, Heading 2, right here. There we go, heading two, and then all the chapters, heading three. Um, so this is my Uber plotter coming out, my Uber organizer. Um, but this is what I'm going to be working on with my story uh, for the rest of the month. And you can totally create this for yourself. Um, all you need are the story beats from Save the Cat and just creating the headers and stuff. I am also going to be giving this to my patrons at any tier. I'm going to be uploading it tomorrow for them that they can use this if they want for Preptober. Um, I also have a few extra beats that I add from um, COC here. These are a few beats that aren't in Save the Cat, but Cam Weiland's book, Five Secrets of story structure talks about these and they sort of fill out the bad guys close in scene and there's also this stuff here that fills in the fun and games uh, scene so yeah so lots of really fun stuff I hope this makes sense let me know if you have any questions or you need me to um, like take a closer look at it but I'm just gonna go to the comments and um, show you some things that people are saying. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, people are chatting with each other, which I love, making friends. Um, 
Kira says, I'm not really sure where to start. I have an idea um, what I want it to look like, but that's about it. So hopefully, Kira, this is helping you, giving you some ideas. Um, everybody is using Save the Cat. Yes, if you haven't read it yet, I can't suggest it enough. Um, okay, JJ, who also, we both sort of had similar ideas, is also saying, I not only did headers for the outline, but I also made a Word doc for the manuscript that has chapter headers and then the beats in the chapters as subheadings. Then I put notes from my outline into each chapter. So a whole nother level there. It's awesome. You should do this. Um, then Holly says, I didn't know you could do that header thing in Word. Yes, it's so cool. And again, you can do it in Google Docs too if you rather do it there. Um, and then I need someone's template so I can modify it. I will. So Martin is one of my patrons. So Martin, I will be uploading that for you guys on Patreon tomorrow. And let's see, in Word 2016, you can move the subheaders like in Scrivener. So that's the other thing. I need to update my Word because supposedly, yeah, you can grab um, each of these in here and move them around uh, like you would in Scrivener. So JJ's awesome. I love learning things from other people. Um, and let's see. Okay, and Rebecca is one of my new patrons too. So woo, yes, you'll be able to use this. And Jody says, I'm using Google Docs. My tablet has more pre-installed, but it's a pain. That's totally fine. So you could actually upload this Word doc to Google Docs too. Um, awesome. And yes, Mara, I'm planning on going to the bookstore tomorrow. Looks like I'm getting Save a Cat. Yes, we have another conversion. Um, yeah, I totally feel like a spokesperson, even though I get absolutely nothing for talking about um, Save the Cat so much, but I just love it. Um, cool. Yes, and if you have Scrivener, obviously you can do a very similar thing. Um, Natalie uses Scrivener, use the compose mode zones and everything else out. Um, cool. And I have see a question. Random, but are you and Bethany ever going to do the Griffin story? I want that story. So if you guys don't know, Bethany... Uh, Atazada and I did a whole YouTube series. You can find it on both of our channels where we um, plotted a novel live with the Save the Cat Beats. It was really fun. Um, the big issue right now, Jackie, is that um, Bethany is on deadline for the, the uh, Jenny Key uh, in two months. And it's like really short timeline. So as much as she and I have both wanted to like delve into it, I think she needs to get through this book first. <laughs> um, but we definitely want to um, actually write that story because we only plotted it. But we we definitely want to write that story and get it to you guys. So maybe sometime next year. I'm sorry, it's not sooner. Um, cool. Wonder <laughs> Morgan's trying to do the same thing. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get it to you guys. We will. We promise. Um, all right, and there is an original Save the Cat, um, but it's more for screenplay writers, which totally works. Um, but um, I just loved how Jessica like tied in all books instead of movies, which was great. Cool. Okay, so the other thing that I want to show you too, real quick, because I mentioned it before, and I think I need to remove this in order to share the other doc. Um, because this is the other cheat sheet I have already shown and given to my patrons where I've basically outlined um, all the beats in a very like concise manner. Um, there's the basic outline and then I have all these notes um, from all the beats in Save the Cat. So again, if you're a patron, you get all of this as well so that you're not just looking at the outline. You can actually reference all the different beats from this doc and then go to your outline so you make sure you're hitting all the beats in the right way. So I just wanted to show you this and how it also is tying in these five secrets of story structure beats, which again, I've found very helpful. Cool, okay, so I'm going to remove that. Oh, let's see if there's anything else I have missed. Um, yeah, so basically, and you guys filled in so many holes with all of your tips and said some other things that I wanted to say as well. So thank you for giving your tips. Um, that is the basis of what I was going to say for prepping for Preptober. Um, I did want to share a little, a few other fun things. So if you guys are still cool to hang out a little bit longer. Um, I was going to share a little bit about how I'm not only trying to 
prep by um, outlining and you know getting inspiration together and all this stuff. I have also like neglected my reading um, a lot, especially since I was trying to, I was doing beta readers and then I was trying to get ready for Pitch Wars. So I have like a good reads goal of 30 books, but I've only read 14. And the reason I've been wanting to read more is because I know that reading more, not only that I enjoy it, but reading more makes you a better writer because you learn from those stories, you get inspiration, um, you see other people's writing uh, styles, and um, you just get outside of your own head and learn even more. So if you are a person that's maybe not going to do as much prepping in the sense of outlining and you just sort of want to go a little bit more by the seat of your pants um, or you feel like you've gotten all your prep done and you don't know what else to do i would really encourage you guys to read during this month and that's one thing that i'm going to try to do i'm going to be um listening to a bunch of audiobooks i have um scribbed um and so they have a whole library of audiobooks that you can listen to at any time and so that's what I'm going to be using. But I also um, wanted to tell you a couple of things that you can actually be reading something. And I've shared this in a previous video, but you can be reading a book and also studying the book as you go. So you could be using um, sticky notes as you read the book to mark things you like about character or you like about the plot or a new idea that you got while you were reading or whatever, but you can also study story structure. So I've, I have a whole video, didn't link it below yet, but I will, um, where I took all of these beats and all the percentages of where they're supposed to be. And I show you guys how to mark, even before you start reading, where the beats should happen so you can passively figure out um, the story structure of this book and if it's working um, just by passing the uh, the sticky notes as you read. So I've actually been doing, I did this last month with my patrons um, with um, the top two tiers. We have a live stream every month and we read a book together. We actually read um, the girl to see came back and, um, we marked our books up or watched our Kindles for the different, um, beats that were going to happen. And then we had a live stream at the end of the month where we, um, talked about the book and we talked about the story structure and we broke it all down and we figured out, Hey, like we really like these things about the book and it worked because, you know, these beats were hitting and these beats were strong and they like matched what they're supposed to be. And there were some aspects of it that we thought could be better. And we talked about that. And, um, and it was a lot of it was centered around the story structure too. So it was really cool to study that, not just by myself, but together with my patrons. Um, and so that was really fun. And so if you are reading while you're prepping this month, um, again, I'll link that video down below, um, or you can search it on my YouTube channel, but it's basically, um, if you search TBR in uh, my YouTube channel, you'll probably, it'll come up. Um, but it's like how to write better stories using your TBR, I think. And just doing that um, is so much fun and you're having fun reading, but you're also passively learning story structure. So that was really, really cool. We are actually um, on Patreon have decided that we're going to do a monthly read along. And so we won't always do a live stream. We'll do that every few months, but we do have a thread in our discord group now um, where we are, we are picking um, one book a month and we are doing a read along and people can decide if they want to study the story structure like that or not. It's up to them. And then um, this is open to every buddy and every tier on, on my Patreon. And then in that um, Discord thread, at the end of the month, we're going to talk about what we really enjoyed, what things we thought could be better, story structure, character arcs, all kinds of stuff just right there in the Discord group. And again, learn more. So we are actually reading Sky Without Stars by Jessica Brody together this month for Preptober. 
and um, it's by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell, but um, Jessica's the one who wrote Save the Cat, so we're going to be looking at her different beats and making sure that she hit them. Um, just kidding, I'm, she did, I'm sure she did great. But um, yeah, we're really excited to read this. It's a beautiful book, it's a thick book, but it's beautiful, and um, yeah, so that's gonna be really fun. And so yeah, if you guys wanna join us, you can check that out. I also wanted to put in a little plug here because recently I have started getting uh, the book box book of the month and I have a link to them down below, but you can get, um, uh, pick one of like five different book selections from all different genres. And um, so you can see here, this was from book of the month book box. And sometimes they are early releases. Sometimes they are total debuts. And um, yeah, you can um, get that. I have an affiliate link down below. They are pretty awesome. And I've gotten this book. I've gotten House of Salt and Sorrow. Um, which I still need to read because I, I made that one the priority. And I just got Fireborn. So I don't know if you guys have um, heard of this one yet. I believe it is a new release and um, it looks epic with dragons and fire and I'm all about it. So um, yeah, if you are looking to be up on new books and getting them in your mailbox, definitely check out YA Book of the Month. They also have an adult box. Um, but let me show you real quick. Um, because I do have, I just want to show you over here what it is. So here, um, if you guys are wondering how much it is. Okay, so your first um, month's book is just $9.99 and after that it is $14.99 a month, but um, they have, yeah, five different books to pick from. And oh yeah, so Fireborn is a debut. And then this is an early release. And um, yeah, there's just, there's all different kinds of genres and topics and authors. And um, it's just super fun. So if you want to check that out, you want to be reading more, you want to be up on newer books that are coming out. Uh, book boxes are always fun. And you can check that out down below. And yeah, if you want to um, join in on our read-alongs, that is something else we're going to be doing on Patreon. So it's going to be really fun. Um, what is this other thing? Oh, okay. No, we're good. So, sorry guys, I'm a little all over the place. I'm going to check in with comments and I have something else exciting to talk to you about before we close up today, but yeah, super fun, super fun to hang out with you guys tonight. Um, oh, we have another suggestion too. Truby's Anatomy of a Story is also amazing, but super duper in intense and not for everyone. So, but there's another um, resource for you guys if you are looking for resources uh, for Preptober. Um, oh, the Save the Cat audiobook is amazing. <gasps> I haven't tried listening to it. Did, did Jessica Brody narrate it? I'm very curious right now. Um, cool. And all right, looking through, looking through. Do, do, do. Oh, we're talking about map making. That sounds fun. Um, cool, cool, cool. Just seeing if we have anything I want to point out. Um, oh, Katie loves the post-it note technique. Yes, super fun. Again, if you haven't seen that video, um, I break it all down for you. And it's just, I do it with all of my books. Like literally I could probably like pull out like 10 books from this bookshelf and they all have sticky notes in them. Um, cool. Oh, and Tracy supposedly has all the map knowledge. So if you guys need to set a map for your nano novel so you can write the distances and figure out in relation where everything is in your world, talk to Tracy. I'm going to talk to Tracy. Um, cool. And yes, Martin, the story, the reading this month is for fun. It's just a fun book, but we are going to talk at the end. Anybody who wants to talk about anything like story structure and stuff, it's not going to be totally um, as structured as our live chat, but um, people can definitely talk about whatever is helpful to them. Um, cool. And looking through, looking through. Stick with me, guys. I have something fun to talk about in a second. Oh, Kira says, I plan on doing update videos on my YouTube channel as I work on my series and we'll share it there at some point. Um, yes, please share it. Tag me when they are up or send the link to me because I love watching those things. Um, 
Let's see. Okay. Oh, you got Fireborn so quick. I literally just ordered it two days ago. I need to be an affiliate. Yeah, you could definitely check into being an affiliate for sure. Um, and let's see. On the Nano website, what is the flower thing under your picture? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I did notice that. Does not everybody have the flower thing under their picture? I'm going to pull that up again for a second. Hold on. Let's just look at this. Nope, can't see it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the flower thing came from. Does anybody else have that? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, she does. Jessica Brody, Brody does narrate the audiobook. That's so fun. And cool. Okay, cool. Oh, and I love that people are subscribing to each other. Yay. Awesome. Okay, so final thing, and this is perfect because we are about coming up on our hour chat. I love doing hourly chats with you guys. Um, the last thing that I want to say is next week on my YouTube channel, I am going to be running a free live webinar. Um, sort of switching gears here from writing to author platforms. So the big thing that I like I love to tell people because in my research, this is what I found is it is not just important to get better at your writing craft. It is equally important to start building your author platform and growing your potential readership right now because what is the point of writing an amazing book and then publishing it and having to then scramble and find people that would be actually interested in it and um, want to buy it and want to read it. It would be so much smarter and so much more helpful for your the success of your book, especially with things like the internet, um, because uh, if you have a readership already ready to um, get your book and excited to read it and excited to review it once it comes out, the internet, the wonderful World Wide Web, especially like Amazon and stuff, will see that activity on your book and will bolster it to the world and you'll be able to reach so many more people. So if author platforms scare you or if you're just like I don't I've been trying to be on social media and I don't know how to grow or how to connect to people or how to um yeah just make a dent um literally and I'm going to share this next week as well um I started um on social media almost two years ago but then I I think it was about six months after I started on social media I um opened up my author website um, and my newsletter and I created that and published that and started gaining traction on that and in two months I had 400 subscribers to my newsletter and now which is a little over a year after I published it I have over 1800 subscribers which is unheard of especially because I don't have any books published yet uh, hopefully soon but um, not yet so a lot of people will always ask me how do I create a website? How, what do I put in a newsletter? Um, how do, you know, once I have those things, how do I actually get people interested in it and wanting to engage with me and wanting to get excited about my books? Um, so I am going to be doing a one hour webinar next, I'll tell you guys right now, uh, Wednesday, next Wednesday. I haven't picked the time yet. Um, but you definitely want to subscribe to my newsletter to get all of the details so that you don't miss it. So um, my website is somewhere down below, and I think I'll also have it here. And you can subscribe to my newsletter, and I'm going to be giving you all the details um, that I'm going to, um, what topic I'm going to focus in on. So if you want to hop onto my Instagram as well, I had a whole poll today um, with different focus topics about websites and newsletters, and I'm having people vote. I think it's also on Twitter. Vote on which topics um, they want to hear about most because I can't tell you everything in an hour. I'm going to focus in on one specific area. And um, I also ask for specific struggles and specific questions that you have about um, growing your author platform with your website and newsletter. So if that is interesting to you, you might totally be like, girl, I am so focused on writing right now and plotting. I can't think about this. Um, but I just want to encourage you that once that first draft 
draft is done, um, you're going to want to start thinking about this. And so it might be good to take a little break, to come to the webinar, to ask your questions, to find out more information so that you have all of this so that once you get to the other side of writing that draft, you can start thinking about, okay, how am I going to talk about this book to other people? How am I going to get people excited about it? How am I going to build that list that I'm connecting to uh, personally? And the big thing is like, yeah, you can be on social media, but those things can fall out of popularity. They can disappear any day. The algorithm can work for you one day and not the next. And so really learning how to utilize and create the website and the newsletter is really your best bet because you own your audience, you have direct connection to them, and it is a game changer, really. So um, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I would love, um, as we wrap up here, if you want to put in the, again, if you're watching the replay in the comments um, or in the chat box, if you're live, let me know what are your biggest questions and struggles about um building an author website, um, branding yourself, because a lot of branding um, goes into designing and building that website, um, newsletter content, or how to use your website and newsletter to build your audience and to um, build engagement, really. Like you don't just want numbers. You don't just want people, yeah, okay, I'll hit subscribe. You want people that are going to be with you for the long haul and are really excited about what you're doing. Um, so hopefully, I know that's sort of like big tangent <laughs> um, to uh, what we have been talking about, but it works in tandem with this, with the writing, you guys, and we, they can't be separated. If you just want to write for fun, it can be separated. But if you actually want to sell books and actually um, want to gain that following and gain that readership, you're going to have to do this side as well. And I'm telling you, once you learn some basic stuff, it can be really fun and really um, rewarding. So I'm just going to pop in the comments for a second and see if there's any other questions as we wrap up? Um, maybe, okay, so this is a little teaser, but there is definitely um, something that I have called Author Website Bootcamp. And after the webinar, after I teach you guys something for a while, I am going to share some exciting news about that bootcamp because until now, I have been offering it in um, at certain times, um, and you can only take it certain times. And there might be something changing about that. I'm giving little details all over the place. But um, yes, so you're definitely going to want to show up at the webinar if you're interested in the next evolution of Author Website Bootcamp. Um, okay, just checking in here, seeing how we're doing. Um, and let me know, guys, as we're wrapping up, let me know um, if you enjoyed this Preptober talk. Again, like... I had a bunch of tips, but you guys had so many. So I'm really, really excited that we got to do this live and share um, tips live and have your guys' engagement in this um, because I think it's so much more rich and interesting than me just sharing my just my own perspective. So I really love this. If you're not already subscribed and you love this kind of environment, I love doing live streams um, and so yeah, so you should definitely subscribe. And if you haven't already, definitely hit the like button on the video. And um, even if you've been live right now, if you want to put a comment on this video, because the live chat does almost always, like it disappears and I miss all the comments. So if you really enjoyed this, if you want to share more tips um, so that other people can find them after this video is over, definitely share them in the comments. Um, and yeah, that would be really appreciated. And if you found this helpful, definitely share this video on your social media. You can grab the link and share it with your friends who are also prepping for Preptober. Um, and hopefully they'll find this helpful too. See some new comments coming in. Let's see. Oh, Morgan says, I have the website and the newsletter almost, but I have no idea how to use those to gain traction and a legit reader subscriber following. Cool. And I think that so far, that is the topic that people have voted for most for me to talk about next week. So I might be talking about that in the webinar, but I need to look at the final numbers once the poll is over. Um, Martin says, newsletters scare me. I have no idea what to say when I can't teach the things most author tubers teach. 
And we can definitely talk about that, Martin, because I think that is a thing that I say to people a lot is like share some kind of helpful thing. Because seriously, like that's probably the thing that has helped me the most. But there is a way to get around that, that if you don't feel like you are a teacher or that you have like a lot of expertise to share, there is still so much in a similar vein without being a teacher that you can share. And I'm not going to give it all away right now, but we will talk about that at the webinar next week for sure. And I will answer that question. Um, Athena says, I like to know what to put on a website when you really have nothing to add. I do have some stuff, but I'm afraid I have nothing of substance yet. So that really is, yeah, the main thing. And again, you can, um, take a look at my website as well, because again, I have a work in progress. Um, I have a story that I've submitted to Bish Wars, but it is not published yet. I've built my whole platform, not having a published book and not having a ton to share yet. Um, and the biggest thing, I'll just give you a little sneak peek of the bare bones is that if you share something that is educational, again, teaching something, um, entertaining or inspiring, those are the three things that everyone gravitates towards um, and wants more of. So if you can learn what you uniquely can bring in one of those three areas, then um, you'll connect to those people that are interested in that. Um, and if you tie, i um, given too much away now, but if you tie you know, that into your writer life and into you as a person and your brand, then you can get a lot of engagement. Um, yeah, reader magnets, opt-ins, we're gonna talk about that. Um, totally need to start my website. Hope to see you at the webinar next week, Stephen. Um, Jody says, I had a free WordPress site, but I'm thinking of paying for a website. Maybe Wix, W-I-X. Just make sure if you're gonna Google that, W-I-X. Um, Athena says, I like these talks, yay! This was a fun talk, thank you, Cassie. Um, Kira says, this was fun. I'm normally working when these happen and I miss them. Yeah, I try to do different times. I, I'm home during the day and doing this life during the day. So um, I typically do them during the day. But when I can, I definitely try to shake it up and see you guys who can only do evenings. Um, JJ says, this was great. Thanks so much. You're welcome, JJ. And uh, so sorry. Yes, you can watch the replay. We're going to finish up in just a minute. And um, the live chats do not disappear. The chat box disappears, but this video will stay on my channel. Um, hopefully that is a good distinction there. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to wrap it up. And you guys, this has been so much fun to chat with you and so much more fun than me just trying to pre-record everything and talk to myself. So thank you for hanging out with me. Hope to see you guys at the webinar next week again. Make sure you subscribe to my newsletter so you don't miss the final details of what time it's going to be on Wednesday and what topic we are going to talk about. And yeah, hopefully we'll see some of you on Patreon joining us for the fun stuff over there. And you guys, I hope that you have been encouraged for Preptober. If nothing else, I hope you walk away with, especially those of you that came in saying, this is my, I've done nano before, but it's my first time prepping. I hope that this helps. You should definitely search Preptober um, on YouTube as well, because there's a bunch of other wonderful author tubers who have done um, great instructional YouTube videos on all of their prepping tips as well. Um, I just watched a couple recently, super helpful. So definitely check those out. You guys are just saying thanks for the chat. You're so welcome. And some of you gonna watch the replay, great. And Jody um, asking about some specifics about Wix. Definitely be at the webinar next week and I will answer all of those questions. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to wrap it up here and so much love. Thanks for joining and we'll see you in the next video.